Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello. Hello to you out there. And hi, John. How are you doing? Hey, uh, hey, Art. Good to see you. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Uh, today's our day with Manny Pacheco. Oh, our, Manny. I, our, I hope he could in, make it with all that traffic out there. Uh, intrepid uh, Hollywood reporter, the man who is a historian and knows all things Hollywood. Art, let's switch over and bring Manny into the picture. Hey, Manny, you're, there. you're really there. <laughs> I am here. Manny's great at standing by. Mm -hmm. Hey, Manny, uh, we all know this is an election year. Um, and not to get into politics about uh, this president or the next president or whatever, but movies, television and movies particularly, have always made a big deal about uh, presidents. Uh, yeah. my, the, the reason I bring this up is not, um, I don't know, maybe a week ago, I was watching um, on one of the old movie channels, Young Mr. Lincoln, mm. and uh, it was starring Henry Fonda, who was not known as a tall guy. And I, I did a little research, and I found out that they literally, in order to make him look as tall as Lincoln, they would put him on a box and shoot so he would be, you know, a foot taller than everybody else and just cut it off at his knees so we couldn't see him standing on a box. And I thought that was fascinating. He did a great job as... Uh, Young Mr. Lincoln it was about it was about a trial in Illinois. He was a congressman and he was debating Fred Frederick Douglass. It was that era. Well, actually, it was Stephen Douglass. Stephen Douglass, thank you. Sorry, his, his brother, he, he his stand in for practicing was uh, yes, uh, yeah, the yeah. other Douglass. Yeah, he's opposed did to Michael play. Douglass, who also played a president. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. Michael Douglass did play a president. Well, didn't he? What was the name of that movie? Uh, the American President. Oh, yeah, With that was a great thing. And uh, Michael J. Fox. And Richard yes. Rutgers, yeah, okay, yeah. But anyway, getting back to uh, young Mr. Lincoln, uh, uh, because you were there, Manny, uh, <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I don't mean to, to suggest that you were there uh, at the time he was president, but you were certainly there uh, during uh, the forgotten part of Hollywood. Uh, well, maybe one either. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, let's let's note a few things out of this uh, okay. initial conversation. One, no president was featured more in cinema than Abraham Lincoln. Well, that stands to reason. And not only did, uh, of course, uh, wonderful job by Henry Fonda, but Raymond Massey played him, and oh, it was yeah. a silent era version. And of course, most recently, Daniel Day Lewis. Mm portrayed the president, the 16th president of the United States. Um, one other thing to consider, no person played somebody who was either aspiring to be or president more as an actor than Henry Fonda. Really? Yes, he, he's running for office to become president in The Best Man in 1964. That was the Gore Vidal piece. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. He, he played a president in that, that uh, a nuclear uh, drama, Fail Safe. Wow. He uh, a president in one of these uh, disaster movies. I believe it was in the movie called Meteor. He plays presidents a lot. <laughs> That's interesting. They must have, uh, I mean, in terms of casting, they must have felt that he, as an actor, embodies that all the elements we'd love to see in a president. That executive style, yes. Yes, yeah. has, calm has, and serious, uh, down home, you know. The demeanor, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, not only has Lincoln been portrayed in, in cinema, but there's been others and really a surprising others. I mean, for example, one of the worst presidents has uh, taken in a poll was the president that followed Lincoln, Andrew Johnson. And uh, they tried to build him up in a 1942 piece called Tennessee Johnson. I mean, this is a guy that was, you know, a, a just about to be impeached. He well, he was, was impeached, yeah. Yeah, he was hated by the South because he was a, a Southern Democrat that ran on the same ticket as Lincoln, the reason right. for a war. And yeah. then he, he, he actually walked away from uh, the Republicans after the war was over, not wanting to give any kind of... Uh, a, Retribution, uh, not any kind of uh, uh, reconstruction help for the uh, for the ex slaves. So he was a man that was onto his own. He was an island, and he was reviled, 
And for that reason, we make a movie about him and kind of try to make him a hero. Uh, for his part, Van Heflin did a pretty good job as playing him. And um, Lionel Barrymore is also featured in, in the role. But boy, talk about picking a guy. On top of everything else, he was hated by the North and by the South. Yep. He was also a, a notorious alcoholic. So there's nothing really to, to like about the guy. But here he is, uh, represented in an MGM uh, drama. Yeah. Now, so. now, well, it, you know, uh, it seems that the uh, uh, the early, as many uh, early movies are, had characters that were, uh, while there was drama about them, were stiffer, and they were we weren't well developed. And uh, in recent times, uh, as you said, the Daniel Day Lewis uh, uh, characterization of Lincoln, they, they uh, it out more that uh, Spielberg did. A lot of PBS stuff that did uh, uh, the Founding Fathers, Madison and Jefferson. They did series like that. Seemed to better capture who the real person was as opposed to the uh, maybe the one-liners. Uh, well, and is that that that's just probably development of a uh, uh, movie genre uh, and how they uh, displayed uh, or portrayed characters. Well, the, the problem was back in the you know studio era, they tried to do an entire expose on the person from you know from birth to death. Whereas more recently, they pick they take an issue in in the case of the Daniel Day Lewis drama, they take the issue of a passage of an amendment and they just capture on that one small segment in time, so it's easier to flesh out uh, the character. I was thinking of another uh, production that was kind of tarnished and that was the 1944 production of Wilson where they looked at Woodrow Wilson uh, and his career as president and uh, David O. Selznick after looking at some of the rushes of the production thought it was so awful that he would not promote it in any way but the problem was it was a popular movie got nominated for an Academy Award so Selznick issued a memo that if he found out any of the cast members or any of the members of uh, of the production team uh, voted for the uh, for the movie as a best picture, they would be fired. <laughs> <laughs> so it was nominated for best picture, but Selznick saw to it that it was never going to win anything. He hated the movie, and uh, you know he just was not going to campaign for it. And that's yeah. that's just the way uh, it so, was. So Manny, what? I don't think I've ever seen it. I, I it obviously. Uh, isn't ubiquitous and well, it's not on the, on the list of Academy Award winners. <laughs> yeah. sure. Well, it was a nominee though. Right. And then there was another movie, not about uh, him as a president, but at the early days of of, uh, of Franklin D. Roosevelt. One great film in 1960, Sunrise at Campobello. Mm. Yes. yes, it really captured the whole idea of what uh, what Franklin D. Roosevelt was going to do post his pro his diagnosis of polio. And uh, Ralph Bellamy is just absolutely magnificent as the early FDR. And uh, Greer Garson, in one of her final roles, plays Eleanor Roosevelt and the relationship between them. It's really fun. It's a really fun movie. I just saw it last week, as a matter of fact, again, an amazing performance by Ralph Bellamy. Uh, Bill Murray got to play uh, FDR, too, in a, in a more recent fair called Hyde Park on Hudson. Oh, yes. And he did yes. a really nice job on that. I didn't think that Bill Murray could play FDR, but he did a great job, actually. I was, he did. I was he impressed. Did. Let's yeah. just say that. Yeah, and, it's, of course, each movie really interprets the president differently. I think of the Bill Murray versus the Ralph Bellamy. Um, you know, it's not just the style of the era, but it's the writer and what their goal is. And, and the, of course, the actors make a big difference. So, right. you know, every every movie, even if it's about the same president, every movie can be can take a whole different meaning. And it, then there are movies. Life. There are actual movies that um, don't feature the president, a president, any president, but they happen to be part of the movie. They're, they're mentioned and then they make a quick appearance. I can think of a number of movies, for example, any number of uh, John Wayne Westerns, uh, uh, John Ford Westerns, directed Westerns, where they feature Ulysses Grant in yeah. a scene or two. Um, there was uh, one uh, movie in particular that I can think of where uh, Eisenhower, before he was president, uh, it started the D-Day operation in the longest day. So there's right. was Eisenhower. I, I also saw Eisenhower recently in a silly little movie with Walter Matthau and Meg Ryan called IQ, in which... Uh, 
Eisenhower makes a quick appearance. Um, so yeah, there there are movies like that where you you see them pop up, a president pop up, but they're not the focus of the movie. But there they are, the yeah. president of the United States, uh, e- either prior to their uh, presidency or while serving in office. Of course, there yeah. was that early fair too, PT one hundred nine, in which uh, it chronicles the uh, heroics of JFK, John F Kennedy, during World War II, and uh, right. that was Cliff. That was Cliff Robertson. But it seems yeah. to me, they, uh, it seems to me that. Uh, 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 in the in the recent era, there have been more fictional presidents, like uh, the American president with uh, right. uh, Michael Douglas, or, or the West Wing, of course, with Martin Sheen uh, mm-hmm. on television, uh, are fictional presidents, and they seem and there's Veep uh, and things like that 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 sort of go into the uh, what a, what a president might be like. Uh, well, if you're talking about TV, you can't, you can't forget Madam Secretary as well. Right. Right. As a tele- well, I, it, yeah. what comes to mind as a modern fictional president is Bill Pullman in the um, Independence uh, Day. Independence Day. Thank you. Right. That's right. You know, and he was real good, actually. I, he gets to play a hero and he's in, he, and loses his wife. And yeah. there's, there's pathos and drama and heroics and adventure. Yeah, you know, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. You know, it's interesting uh, because the ones with the fictional presidents are really addressing what we think a president should be. Sure. And the ones about a real president, Lincoln or FDR or whatever, are an interpretation of a real person uh, well, based, on, of, based on what they did. Some of the more recent fare, I have to tell you, I do take issue. I mean, I think uh, there have been a number of directed uh, you know, productions that I just, they don't even resemble the truth. And I, I don't know why they become so popular. One about JFK, obviously. Uh, and, and of course there was one about Nixon and they're just, they're just not very good productions and they want to give the director's point of view instead of giving just an honest portrayal right. of who the person might've been. And they, the director themselves might have been, you know, fairly accurate, but they are just so over the top trying to make a point that it really ends up being, uh, a, you can see the director's uh, fingerprints all over the production. And that's, sure. not what, that's not why you go to the movies. You don't want to, you don't want to be thinking about the director. You want to be thinking about the, the, the storyline and right. the acting, you know, that's really what, what you go to the movies for. So those more recent productions have just been, oh. Hard to watch. Hard to watch. So, uh, uh, Manny, uh, because this is your life, this is what you're doing, you teach and you study, what is your favorite all-time movie with a president as a central character, uh, real or fictional? Well, I, I, I think Sunrise at Campobello is hard to beat. I think that that characterization of FDR is so pinpoint. A shame Ralph Bellamy was ignored uh, for an Oscar nomination because he really deserved it. I don't think he would have beaten Burt Lancaster and Elmer Gantry, but at least the nomination, I think for sure, uh, was, would have been well-deserved. And Greer Garson did get the nomination, her last of seven. She had seven nominations, and she got the last one for her role as Eleanor Roosevelt. I think for my money, that's my favorite. With Believe it or not, the Daniel Day-Lewis coming in second. I thought that was just... An absolutely magnificent film, and um, I was just really, really impressed with uh, with Lewis's portrayal. Very, uh, he brought Lincoln to life for me. I felt like I was sitting at Disneyland at great moments with Mr. Lincoln. It was, it was really, a, it was definitely a worth worth the price of admission. You know what I liked about that particular movie was the fact that. They did the portrayal of Lincoln as that homespun guy who would uh, go off with aphorisms and things like that. But they also made, I can't remember who it was, Secretary of State Seward or somebody, had a comment like, oh, geez, there he goes again with one of his stories. You know, that made he it so real. He should have been nominated for an Academy Award, the gentleman who played a Seward. His yes. name escapes me right now. But yeah, he was fabulous. He makes yeah. the movie. That relationship between Secretary of State Seward and Lincoln. Yes. And you've got to know the history of this. Seward is about to be attacked. The president is about to be murdered. The, the president loses his life, and Seward is viciously attacked with knives to his throat in a, an attempted coup, overthrow of the government, John Wilkes Booth and the like. Uh, Seward survives, but barely. 
and the uh, chain of command is disrupted. The chain of authority, executive authority, is disrupted in very, very serious ways. So yeah. this is uh, this. They're, they're only about two or three weeks out of that uh, that this story takes place. I mean, that's that's yeah. that story in itself is very compelling. So sure, sure. But I just love the characters playing off each other uh, in a realistic manner. Uh, instead of making Lincoln uh, this heroic angel that could do no wrong. That was somehow prophetic. Uh, they also made him a real person that right. some people really hated. And Seward was played by David Strathern, great actor. Boy, oh yes, yes. How does yes. that guy doesn't? He, how does he not have a mantle of Oscars? He uh, was just terrific. You're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, with the rise in the popularity of Barack Obama as president, and now you, you have a chance of seeing a fictional president played by Morgan Freeman. That's happened too. Oh, so, and, and Morgan Freeman has played the president that's right. uh, on a number of times, yeah. I think so, one or two times for sure, yeah, he absolutely. Also played, he also played God, didn't he? Uh, well, he <laughs> could play God if he chose. <laughs> I don't know that he has, but he could. <laughs> I think he did, yeah, sure, he did. In, uh, in Oh God uh, 2 or something right. like that, yeah. So, uh, anyway, speaking, let's... speaking of God, speaking of God, uh, if uh, people want to read more about uh, your years and years and years of research, uh, where's a good place for them to go? Well, of course, ForgottenHollywood.com. And, and of course, my book series, the Forgotten Hollywood book series, available on Amazon. And let me please remind everybody, it doesn't matter who you vote for, the important thing is to vote. Please, go out and vote. That's yes. uh, that's about as good of advice, vote early uh, and or, or vote in person or vote by mail, but just vote. You know, uh, you know it, it really... Exercising your franchise is really an important thing, and no, no less than Edmund O'Brien once suggested that in The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. So there is a Hollywood tie to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done. Well, thank you again, Manny, for this interesting uh, uh, trip down electoral lane. Electoral lane. <laughs> there you go. And we look forward to uh, seeing you again real soon. Yeah, and, and I expect to see a uh, I voted uh, sticker on you when we see you again. That's right. <laughs> All right, take care, Manny. See you soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.